Congratulations on your new home. The spring and summer seasons are the time to complete your landscaping, and we are here to help you understand what is required. Architectural guidelines are put into place by land developers in the interest of creating a beautiful streetscape and overall neighborhood for you and your family. These guidelines include a comprehensive list of items, but we are going to focus on landscaping requirements. Architectural guidelines are subject to inspection and approval by your land developer. Please note, your landscaping should not be started until you have received your rough grade certificate from Paysetter Homes and letter of approval from your municipality. Completing your landscaping before you have received this certificate may put you at risk to remove what has been completed if your rough grade hasn't been approved. Please note that you have one year after your rough grade approval date, not your possession date, to complete your final grade based on the municipality's requirements. In order to ensure you are completing your landscaping properly, let's explore some common procedures. Prior to any other work to your yard, you'll need to put down topsoil over your yard following the slopes of your rough grade. Once completed, now is the time to call a land surveyor for your final grade certificate. After you obtain your final grade certificate, you may request a visual inspection from your municipality. Find out more by visiting your municipality's website. Once you have your final grade inspection at the topsoil stage, you are ready to place your trees, shrubs and sod. What types of trees are permitted? Architectural guidelines will specify the type of tree required in your yard, which could include deciduous, coniferous or evergreen trees. A deciduous tree is one that sheds its leaves seasonally. Some examples of deciduous trees are aspen, maple, birch, oak, among many others. A coniferous tree keeps its leaves year-round and bears cones. Some examples of coniferous trees are pine, cypress, cedar, spruce, and more. Evergreens are very similar to coniferous in that they retain their leaves or needles all year long. However, these trees produce flowers instead of cones. Architectural guidelines may use the term evergreen in place of coniferous. In this case, consult a greenhouse for further clarification. Architectural guidelines will require your tree to have a certain caliper, which is a measurement that determines the overall size of the tree. The caliper is the measurement of the width of the tree's trunk, across, not around. Developers will require a minimum caliper to ensure every home's tree on the street is about the same age. The caliper is measured six inches up from the soil. Use a measuring tape or caliper tool to measure the width across the trunk. A two inch caliper will measure two inches across. A specific number of shrubs could be required as per architectural guidelines, and each shrub will need to be a certain height and or spread at time of planting. Shrubs can be any species you like unless specified in your guidelines. Perennials can also be substituted for shrubs unless otherwise stated. In some cases, your guidelines may indicate your shrub bed be edged or the materials surrounding your shrubs may be specified, such as wood chips, rocks, etc. Please review your guidelines closely for how and where you are required to install your shrub bed. Please note, however, that these guidelines indicate single shrubs at their minimum size. You are not permitted to bunch multiple smaller shrubs together to form the minimum size. Should you attempt to install shrubs in this manner, your landscaping will fail inspection. A raised shrub bed is exactly as it sounds. It's elevated up from the ground level. Certain communities will require this type of shrub bed to better display the foliage you install. There are a few ways to complete this type of bed, but in most cases, it is a simple slope upward from your lawn to your house. In some cases, it is simply a hill raised up from the lawn with shrubs installed on the slope and top of the hill. Some developers may not permit this type of shrub bed except in certain circumstances. Check your guidelines for details and if in doubt, contact Paysetter's seasonal department. Architectural guidelines may require edging to be installed around shrub beds and at the base of trees. If this is required, the developer will outline the type of edging to use in your installation. Edging materials may consist of plastic, 
metal, stone, or concrete. Most developers require you to install sod as opposed to grass seed. Seed can take several years to grow into a full, lush lawn, and your developer will require a complete landscape by the deadline, including your grass. Sod is pre-grown grass that you purchase in lengths. It needs to be laid immediately upon purchase and watered extensively in the first several weeks in order to avoid drying up. Please visit our seasonal page at yourpacesetter.com for more details on how to care for your newly installed sod. Fencing styles, colors, and materials are unique to each community. Your architectural guidelines will usually include a detailed drawing of how the fence in your community needs to be constructed. You are responsible for finishing the fence on your lot. Fencing is not usually required in order to pass inspection or to receive your deposit back, but it is in certain communities. It is best to refer to your architectural guidelines to be certain. Your guidelines will stipulate the materials and style, along with the paint or stain color required. Ensure you use exactly what has been outlined, otherwise you may be asked by your developer to change it. It is highly recommended that you have your property lines marked prior to building your fence to ensure you are building in the right location. Once your landscaping is complete and you have both your final grade certificate and municipal approval letter, submit those documents to Pacesetter's Seasonal Department at seasonal at yourpacesetter.com. We will then send a request to the developer for final inspection. Please note that developer inspections can take up to six weeks depending on volume as well as weather since inspections can only be completed in summer months. These inspections are conducted only by the developer and their schedule is at their discretion. Pacesetter has no ability to affect the timing of your inspection or their approvals. Once the developer approves your landscaping, Pacesetter will be notified and your deposit will be released. Your deposit will be returned in the form of a check by a regular mail. To recap, Pacesetter Homes will obtain the Rough Grade Certificate and Municipal Rough Grade Inspection and send approval copies to homeowner. Homeowner to start final grade process by spreading topsoil over the approved rough grade. Homeowner to request a final grade certificate from an Alberta land surveyor. Once the final grade certificate is completed, the homeowner must send it to the municipality along with a request for final grade inspection from the municipality. Once approved, you may proceed with installing your sod, shrubs, trees, and the rest of your landscaping materials as required by your architectural controls. After your landscaping is complete, you may request for your landscaping deposit to be returned by emailing copies of your final grade certificate and approved final grade inspection to seasonal at yourpacesetter.com. Pacesetter will submit your documents to the developer of your area and they will conduct a visual inspection. Timing varies based on volume and weather. Upon approval, the developer will notify Pacesetter and your deposit will be mailed out to you. If the developer inspection fails, we will notify you of the deficiency for correction. Once completed, you will need to notify us again to request a reinspection from the developer. Please note, there may be a reinspection fee depending on the area. Reinspection fees will be deducted from your landscape deposit refund. This is the standard grading approval process for the City of Edmonton and most of the surrounding municipalities. But there are some slight differences in Devon and Leduc. More detailed information may be found on the website of the municipality you live in. If you have further questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you for watching. We hope to have provided you with the information you need to complete your new home's landscaping. If you have further questions, please contact us at seasonal at yourpacesetter.com or visit yourpacesetter.com slash seasonal.